Hi. Right, let's see if this will work. So, here's our first lesson. Um, obviously, I'm tweaking something that I made uh, last year to do, to do with marriage, so I say lesson one. Um, the idea here is that I am going to do some little loom recordings of some of the um, activities, and then you're just going to work through them uh, as best you can. And then on Friday, we'll get back together, hopefully, all of us in the room together. I, I, I turned the camera around so you could see your room again and remember what it's like to be in college. Um, so, this week we're going to um, talk about marriage. Uh, I don't know how many of you plan on getting married in the future. Um, obviously, I've done it twice now. Definitely say I'm enjoying the second one a bit more than the first. Um, is marriage just something completely outdated? Is it just not on your agenda? Um, why do we have marriages? What does a marriage mean? So these are all the kinds of things I want you thinking about as we're working through some of these activities, because obviously we're thinking particularly about what marriage meant in the Victorian era. Um, is marriage different for men and women? Do you go into a marriage with different expectations? Okay. Uh, ah, here's the problem. I need to make myself a bit smaller. That hasn't worked. Ah, that's the one I need. You can still see me, but I'm down there. Um, okay, so the first thing that I would like you to do is make a note of these quotations. And we're thinking about these now in terms of a bit of AO3 and AO5. So, in the 16th century, Martin Luther said this, Let the wife make her husband glad to come home, and let him make her sorry to see him leave. A good husband makes a good wife, said John Florio. And Goldsmith says, all that a husband or wife really wants is to be pitied a little, praised a little, and appreciated a little. So give yourself a bit of time to think those over. Um, are they just all old fashioned nonsense? Um, do you think they still apply today? Do you see this in the marriages that you are surrounded by? Do you see this? Um, a good husband makes a good wife. The, the word good is just so loaded there, isn't it? So loaded. What does good mean? <laughs> so, I'm just clicking the wrong thing there. Professional as ever. What makes a successful marriage? A little bit of creativity here. Um, this is your next task, is to write a little recipe. Could be good for me, couldn't it? Coming up to my first wedding anniversary. What should I be doing? Or what should we be doing, the two of us? What should we avoid? Um, what, what do you think a success, what, what, what would you understand by the term a successful marriage? So that's, your little activity there. This is um, th this this bit's optional. Uh, there's a Guardian article here about divorce statistics, but it, it's a few years old now. So I've also added on there ONS, which is the Office for National Statistics about divorce. Some of um, the more geeky among you, and myself included, there. Uh, you might just want to have a little troll f through that, and, and from that, can you, you know, if you, I think that it's something like fifty percent of marriages end in divorce. The divorce rate's high. Um, why? Why and why are divorce rates higher now than they were fifty years ago? So have a, have a look through that and, and see if you can draw any conclusions. Any of you um, math students, you might. Uh, be able to shed some statistical light on those ideas for us. What's next? Right, okay, so, um, oh, in your groups, I need to edit that, you're not in groups, are you? Um, I've, uh, if, you, if you go on that link, you will find a list of, of quotations to do with um, marriage, and they're organised chronologically through each act. I want you to go through them and 
just see what's, what sort of kind of patterns um, you can see that are starting to emerge. So does the way, for example, that Nora talks about marriage, does that change? Um, remember that we've got um, rank as that outside and looking in on a marriage. What's going on there? Again, I'm not looking for masses of detail here, but be ready on Friday just to share some of your observations. Are you seeing any patterns emerging? And um, again, this could be used as an essay question if some of you are wanting to get into the um, swing of doing a bit more of extended writing. So, Henrik Ibsen's A Doll's House displays three viewpoints of marriage. One of fantasy, one for security, and the other is a model of a true marriage. So as a minimum, I want you to respond to that statement, even if it's just in note form, um, pull it apart a little bit. How far and in what ways do you agree with this view? So what evidence can you find? If you want to take it further and have a go at writing a bit more, even if it's just a bit of an extended paragraph, then you can have a go at that as well. Um, but that's basically your first lesson. Oh, I need to get rid of that. Don't I? About Paradise Lost. Living and learning, living and learning. Um, but I have kept this on because um, your other bits of uh, work this week are going to be responding to two um, contextual pieces, one factual and one fictional, uh, including this story by Chopin. So um, that's, that's your uh, activity for the beginning of the week. Good luck and remember to email me with any questions. Um, keep, you know, just keep pausing this and going back over little bits and I'll see you on Friday.